understand. Yeah, we got your message that uh, you wanted to come and have a chat with us, and uh, so uh, we've gathered ourselves here, and uh, we are all ears. So we are welcome once again. Okay. Now, um, I think we, in requesting for this meeting, we gave an indication of why we wanted to see you. And it's just that we, we've had reports that certain, um, well, how shall I put it? That in, within the past few days, um, either a member of multimedia, I think, we, we, the reports we have indicate that somebody who works with multimedia, a reporter or a, a staff, cameraman, crew, whoever, and also that some of your equipment had been attacked by people purporting to be NPP supporters. Now we are here to say we are sorry. We apologize if, for any such behavior. That is not behavior that is sanctioned by the party or its leadership or its membership for that matter. This party can say without any fear of contradiction that in the history of this country, this is the party that has fought for democracy, that has fought for multi-party elections in this country. We are the party anything that the Electoral Commission does, which has made it something to be quoted in other parts of the world. And the reason why they are called to go and help in other parts of the Africa, everything that has worked was instigated and campaigned for by the NPP. We recognize this is the party that stands for press freedom. We are known as having good relations with the media. We consider it anybody who attacks the media is an attack on freedom of the press, on freedom of speech. And that is what we have always advocated for. So we want to say if that happened in our name, we apologize, we are sorry, it's not sanctioned by us, it's, we completely condemn it and we don't want it to happen. Our supporters have been told quite clearly in very categorical terms that yes, the party has a difficulty with the results as have been announced by the Electoral Commission, but we are going through the proper sanctions to take our matter to the court and to the Supreme Court. That's what the leadership has said very clearly. And we don't want any other way of resolving this issue. And if your staff or your equipment have in any way been interfered with in the pursuance of your doing your job, we wish to apologize. We wish to say we are sorry. It is not something we want to do. We want you to continue to do your work professionally. It is in our interest that you do your work professionally. And we do not sanction any attack on any member of the media. That's where we are. I hope I did it. I, I was going to time myself, but I think <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is about what I, we wanted to say. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. And to place on record, this is a letter, the letter that kind of uh, encapsulates what I've said, signed by our chairman. Thank you. Uh, multimedia has been very professional in your reporting. Uh, you've always called elections. You called elections in 1996, in 2000, and so on. Um, and so if this year you didn't call elections for us, it doesn't justify any anger against you. But you know, in a situation where there's a large crowd, look at the supporters of the, even by this uh, resource, more than 5 million. How many of them are, are at the circle? Maybe 2,000, 3,000? And if four or five of them go out of hand, you know, it blows the whole thing apart. Um, so, uh, it is totally unjustified. We, uh, the party, 
uh, indeed the very day that it happened the the flag bearer wanted to call mr kwesi chum uh, but the connection was not going through uh, that was how bad um, that that we felt um, if there's any party that is going to be classified as the friend of the media i'm sure it's the npp in this country um, um, the we you know decriminalize free speech we give the press the, the press center and our philosophy has always been uh, liberal democracy and the bedrock of liberal democracy is the media so the last thing we would sanction is an attack on the media but in the situation that um, that it happened um, we will not justify it, but we just also like to put it into context. If we had a bit of money, now we are broke. We would have made uh, uh, some financial uh, recompense to you. But now we, we are, I don't think we've even paid you fully for the adverts. And you may have to write it off. <laughs> you may have to consider writing it off at a later date. Um, but at least we, we should come and um, express our, our regrets personally. We don't know if the crew that got attacked is here, uh, but if they are not, we, we are sure that you would stand um, for them. And to assure you that it's something that should not mar the relationship between us and, and your good selves. I mean, you are the... Uh, there can also be no serious media in Ghana without multimedia. I mean, I'm not saying it because you are here, but that, that is the reality. So, um, and we, we pray that you take it in good faith. Yeah, thank you. I think your message is, is well received. Uh, we can understand that sometimes things get out of hand, especially when there's a mob in place. Um, yes, the gentlemen involved are not here, but we will pass on the message to them. And uh, I think, um, yeah, we don't have any issue beyond that. We, we think that it's an unfortunate incident, but we will continue to do our work and uh, do it as in as balanced a manner as we, we can. And that's what we've always uh, tried to do. So we will take it from there. And uh, we are hoping that this whole issue will be resolved sooner rather than later, so that life will return to normal for all of us. So thank you very much for coming. Apology has been well received and accepted. I can say that, right? Yes. We can also now look at the time that lies ahead of us. We're moving into uncharted territory as a nation. And it's going to be very challenging for both the political parties, their leadership, and for their partners, like you, the media. I think I'd like to appeal at this time that as we move on, we take into account the rules of fair play, and let's make sure that we have a, we have a government in waiting, but we still have a political discussion that we are having about the results of this election. We are calling upon you to make sure that you fully interrogate every incident that happens, that you ask the right questions, and that you give us equal time, whenever possible, to state our side of the story and to make our case through you to the Ghanaian people. I think that's going to become more and more important in the days ahead as this uh, collation gets co completed and as we head for the court. We would like to carry the people of Ghana with us in the clear understanding that we are fighting for democracy and for the strengthening of our institutions rather than fighting for the position of one person. Once you decide to go to court, the processes are not overnight. There is no way that it's going to be done in a week or two weeks. It's a long struggle and we need all the support we can get to make sure that people understand that what we are doing is something that needs to be done for this country and for our children and generations unborn. Thank you. And, uh, it's, it's just a, a little appeal that even as you're asking us to also offer fair space and time, 
I think we are committed to that. We'll continue to do that. But I think the past few days, what has made it difficult to continue to do that has been because of some of the um, incidents, the aggression and the, and the like. And indeed, even team members are, are you would say, hesitant or they are afraid for their lives. And we've had to assure them over and over again to be able to do that. So beyond engaging us, if you can also engage your supporters, whichever levels you, you do that, mm -hmm. to, to let them appreciate the kind of work we do and that we are partners and not the other way around. So for me, that's the only thing I want to add to this whole um, briefing. The last time we had a National Executive Committee meeting, they stormed the meeting, and, but we could understand. The emotions are very raw. They believe that their party won the elections. So coming together serves as some kind of therapy for them. There's a crisis. I mean, it's like there's a calamity. People gather around. People seek solace, solidarity in, in the groups. That's how it is. It's just that we must be careful that it doesn't, the coming together of so many people, a few people, hey, 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 it doesn't degenerate. So actually, all of this is in uh, uh, agreement with the police. The police, in fact, the, the, the supporters wanted to gather at the Independence Square. The police said that that is too close to the castle. And that if there's any excesses, it might not be, it might have a bigger impact. So they would give them the Nkrumah circle. So they are there with the active permission of the police. The regular rules, five-day requirement for gatherings have all been relaxed because the police themselves understand that in this period, um, you can't apply the rules strictly. That it's good that they gather at a place instead of isolated incidents all over the place. It's just unfortunate that when they also gather, a few people um, may take the law into their hands and so on. Um, but we're hoping that gradually we are speaking to them. Every time any of our leaders speak to them, we advise them to be calm and not to take their law into their own hands. But sometimes these things happen. If it was some other political party, it would have been worse than this. And you, you know this. <laughs> 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 okay. So uh, once again, thank you for coming. We look forward to uh, continuing to cover the events as they unfold, and uh, we will do that with the usual integrity. Yes. So thank you very much.